Good day everyone. Again, this is Instructor Jonaline and this pre-recorded lecture video is about the content of our module 3 that contains topics from chapter 2. Concentrating to the topic, understanding vulnerabilities, threats, and control. Again, this lecture is in the form of Q&A and samples to explain the terms broader. So let's take question number one. How does the following term affects computer security? First, threat. So computer might get damaged once allowed to get into the system because of vulnerabilities. Vulnerability. It can be an open door to let threats damage the system and risks the damage to be done when threat gets in the system because of vulnerabilities so if we'll think about it these three terms are connected to each other where it means risks such as what we've discussed from our previous videos can be done when a threat which carries the damage okay will get into our computer system because of vulnerabilities in terms of hardware or software. So it al also means that we can avoid or prevent the risk if there is no hardware or software vulnerabilities where threats can get through to do the damage. And so risk is equal to threat probability plus vulnerability impact. So if there is no or if we could avoid software or hardware vulnerability, then there is no possibility that threat can go into our system. So then we can avoid risks. Okay, question number two. How can the following types of threats affect computer security? First, natural threats. Natural threats such as floods can damage our computer physically okay, and can cause compromises of functions. Okay, so it might lead to malfunctions where it can totally no longer provide service because it's already damaged so the risk is you might not be able to retrieve the information from that computer caused by natural threats second unintentional threats okay unintentional threats like an employee mistakenly manipulated the hardware okay that may lead also to physical damage that can cause again computer malfunction okay or he might mistakenly manipulate the software that can lead to information loss or may lead to some technical errors okay that can cause difficulty to retrieve information next term intentional threats Intentional threats are the most damaging type of threat because doing or planning a threat intentionally means liking the damage to be done successfully. Okay. Okay. It could also lead to physical damage. Okay. Again, computer malfunction. Second, information leakage because that tour wanted to leak the information publicly or to other companies. Okay, so information and credential theft okay, may also be done that can be used to more damages, especially in using it to money transactions or even in the dark web. So among all threats, intentional threats are the most dangerous next question 
how can we avoid risks to happen in terms of hardware vulnerability and threats? Okay, so first we have to assure physical security since hardware is defined to be our computer's physical component. So check whether the physical environment is safe to place the computer. Is it safe from physical force that will lead it to fall? Is it safe from liquid spills where employees might accidentally or intentionally spill water or drinks into it? What if it's a mainframe computer, right? Is it safe from animals like mice that can bite wirings and can cause malfunctions? So, we should also consider its safety from people's accessibility, specifically the employees, the insiders, or can also be the outsiders. Is the place safe from thefts where people can carry it in a glance? Okay, Were the employees literate enough on how to use the hardware components? Because if not, it may also lead to computer malfunction. And of course, is its place safe from natu natural disasters? We should also consider essential services availability like power. Okay, what if there is a power interruption? Is there an available power source for the computer to continue its service? Okay. Next. How can we avoid risks to happen in terms of software vulnerability and threats? Okay, to avoid vulnerability and threats in terms of software security, we should consider the persons involved that has and can get access to our computer. So it might be insiders and again, outsiders. So there might be a situation again that Okay, those people will intentionally plan a threat where he might be able to modify or delete some information or update settings that could lead to information loss and credibility. So you should be observable of the persons involved. We should also consider looking updates in our firewall always, okay, firewall settings. Because it could be a door for those malicious threats like malware or tampered files, okay, as we have been uh, discussed from the previous lectures, okay, wherein tampered files can lead to, and also the malware, can lead to software manipulation and take risks on information thefts, okay, so we should have a strong firewall next how can we avoid risks to happen in terms of data vulnerability and threats okay in terms of data vulnerability and threats we should uh, keep okay in mind always to encrypt important information if possible all available data should be encrypted to protect it from hackers and other threats. We should also keep on updating our firewall again to avoid data exploitation caused by malware, okay, tampered files. Okay, and of course, again, human access, okay, that can cause information leakage. So among those important components, hardware, software, and data, okay, uh, intentional threats talaga is the most damaging. Okay. Next question. What is identity theft and why does an individual user be aware of it? Okay. So identity theft logically has something to do with your credentials being theft by hackers or dark-minded netizens, even an insider, okay, your employee mismo, if ever. Okay, so our identity is the very first thing as data or information to be protected in terms of computing. So maaari ding i-consider ito sa mga social media accounts natin. 
So, ingat-ingat sa pagsasabi, pagbabanggit, or pagsishare ng mga importanteng information about you. Okay? Because if an important information okay, was gotten, okay, that hacker may steal your money or other benefits. He could also sell your information like pictures or private videos on the dark web without any permission. And the worst thing is that without you knowing that you're being watched there, okay? You own that uh, inside those pictures, inside those videos, it is you, okay, being watched on the dark web. Identity theft could also lead to impersonation where someone can stand as you because he has a confidential information that may prove that he is you. Okay, for example, in online selling, many are being scammed by scammers claiming that their dummy accounts are really their personality, but the truth is not. Okay, next question. How theft identity does happen from the following threats? Phishing, phone scams, okay. So when you open suspicious login sessions and respond to it, it may lead to identity theft. Like what I have told you last time. So think before you click, okay. Does the site you're surfing into really need to get your credentials? Kailangan bang... Input mo na naman yung login session mo, yung login credentials mo ng Gmail account or Facebook account para sa site na to. Okay. So, why? So, we should also avoid entertaining scammers. Because again, as I have told you, walang manloloko if walang maloloko. So, think twice before entertaining strangers. You may want to stock the profile account first if it has given you details like um, some big person is um, doing this, okay? So, you might want to investigate first, okay, if he is a scammer, okay, from that phone call or not. Yeah, scheming, dumpster diving, mail theft, child ID theft, tax ID theft. Okay, so unnoticeable spies, impersonators. This threat is like, for example, you are about to get money from an automated teller machine. So you happen to input your credentials. Diba? Um, pipindot tayo doon yung PIN code natin. Tapos, we do not know that there is a hidden camera pala on top of it. So, that is one way, okay, as an spy to get your credential. So, you should also always check, okay, your emails if there is something like an attached information of your money cards. Okay, so... Next, Wi-Fi hacking and malware. We've discussed this already from previous lecture. So, this could also be a backdoor risk. Okay, wherein um, a hacker can manipulate everything on your computer once a malware or tampered um, files is being clicked. We do not know. What happened as we click the tampered files? Okay, also in network, Wi-Fi hacking. Once that hacker gets into your network, he might be able to go into your system. Okay, next question. What are the possible steps to do to avoid information risks? First, encryption. So, if possible, again, all data must be encrypted to avoid hackers from reading it easily. Okay. So, we should always have an update on our software controls. Okay. Especially in our computer system, operating system. Okay. As it is the main interface of our computing devices. So, once a hacker gets into your operating system he might be able to access everything okay. 
And of course, okay, as explained earlier, we should take note on how to protect our physical device from such risks that has been discussed. So how will you going to protect your computing device from natural disasters, from those unintentional uh, threats? And the worst and most uh, alarming threat, okay? is the intentional threat that we do not know is being done by our employees, insiders, okay? So, yeah, that's it for this uh, chapter. So, for the next chapters, we might tackle again the terms, okay, to be used for other security matters about computing and information assurance and security. So, please take note and keep the discussions in mind. Okay, so keep safe always and God bless everyone.